Some of you know that we actually uh, worked on planting, actually in technically a couple of churches, but we planted, we were planting a church in Goodyear, Arizona. And one of the things that we, we were actually what was called a parachute drop. A parachute drop means that Debbie and I went to Goodyear knowing nobody with what? It's turned on, so I can't change it here. Yeah, I'll turn it on and off. But I don't even have a mute button, so. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, so we went, went to, to Goodyear and, and uh, well, it's called a parachute drop and that means you move into this area. We were about 40 or 50 miles away from where we had been ministering and no one went there with us. We had nobody that we knew and we had to start planting a church. Uh, and I tell you, Planting a church through a parachute drop, they say, is the most unsuccessful way of planting, and we understand why. <laughs> it's really hard. Now, God did some amazing things and really blessed us, but uh, it was really challenging because we're also, we had to try to raise financial support. And one of the things that got, was really frustrating is I remember the, when I heard that a letter had gone out to the people that had been financially supporting us. And it was tough, okay? And this letter went out from another church planter in Arizona who said, Bill's going to close his church, so would you please give your support to us? <laughs> that was just one of many things that happened by the very people that were supposed to be most supportive of us. We had a steering committee that, that we were supposed to meet with. And when I, I can remember meeting with them one day, and we were having some really wild stuff with people. The people that we were ministering to were like unchurched people, okay? That meant they had some interesting things in their experience from demonic stuff, and, and for real, demonic stuff. I mean, just crazy stuff going on. And so I remember going to our steering committee one day, and I said, guys, I really need you to pray for me. And they said, well, tell us, Bill, what's happening? And I started sharing some of the things that I had. That, and, I said, and again, I said, I really need you to pray for me. For the next 30 minutes, I got all kinds of advice. And I walked away from that meeting saying, I came to this meeting knowing I really needed prayer. And didn't get it. And I remember thinking, God, why? Why, when we're working so hard for you, are the people that are supposed to be there on your side? God, it's hard enough out here dealing with all this stuff and trying to reach people. For, but to have the very people that are supposed to be your supporters basically becoming your enemy? God, why? This morning, Tim is having his last service at uh, Riverside First Baptist Church. He got an email from the, the pastor yesterday, and, 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 and some of it was good. He was saying, you know, I'm sorry, Tim, that for these last two weeks, basically Tim's been fired. But he was allowed to resign. <laughs> and, and Tim has been just so gracious in this process. But the pastor in the email said, you know, I'm sorry for the last couple of weeks. You know, this has been hard on me. <laughs> yeah, how about Tim? <laughs> it's been hard on me, Tim, and, and so I have been kind of distant from you. Uh, but... But, and you know, it's been tough because, um, you know, we learned that, you know, our finances are going down and we have many people that could, you know, if we, just one of our good, good givers dies, we, you know, we could be in financial trouble. And that really contributed to us having to say you needed to leave. And, and um, I'm sorry about that. And, uh, and it's been hard for Tim to say, you know, why? Especially hard when he, he also knows that as soon as uh, he, they announced his resignation to the staff, uh, the, he, uh, which is only three other people now, his wife and one lady working with children, he announced to the staff, um, we're all going to get raises now because Tim has resigned. Even though it was supposedly about financial issues. <laughs> it's just, and so Tim's had, you know, why God? Now what I appreciate though is, is that he hasn't stuck there. So I just got to say this just as an aside. He hasn't stuck there and he's really saying, okay God, what's the opportunity? And I really believe that God, you're going to do something for me through this. 
and that's a good place to be. But, but the why question is very understandable. When our nephew Cody was born, within the first few days, all of a sudden he turned blue, Julie rushed him to the doctor, and the, the doctor saw him as he walked in the door and, and sees him blue, grabs him and runs across the street to where the Community Medical Center was to the emergency ward. I mean, literally, grabs Cody out of Julie's hands and runs him across the street. He was helicoptered from there to Loma Linda University Hospital, excuse me, over here in Loma Linda, where he, within a couple of days he had a major heart surgery. He was born with half a heart that was in backwards and other things that were uh, disoriented inside his body. It was beginning of several surgeries, heart surgeries, major heart surgeries that he would go through over the next eight years. At eight and a half years old, he had what, what was going to be a very significant surgery. It was a surgery that mom and dad, Julie and Mike, said, you know, we're going to do this because if we don't give him this surgery, he will only live another year. If we give him this surgery and it's successful, this could be the thing that could give him years of life. So rather than deciding to end his life in a year, they, they went through this major surgery. What was really incredible was the surgery was a success. And it, and it was one in which they said his heart now is basically, through all these different surgeries, now like a normal heart. And what was really incredible is as he was kind of trying to go through the healing process, which was difficult, and unfortunately, his sternum became infected, and they had to keep him, oh, basically, his chest wide open, and he was unable to heal. And Julie and Mike got word, this was really incredible, got word that a heart, a transplant heart was available for Cody that matched him perfectly. They prepped him for surgery, and then suddenly stopped. And they said Cody's body had so much medication in it to try to keep the blood flowing the, and all that he couldn't go through the surgery. And it was a short time later when Cody died. And you can only imagine what Mike and Julie were thinking. You know, Why, God, we've done this surgery. We've gotten so close. And then for a transplant heart to actually be available right now when he needs it, but because of the meds, him not be able to have surgery. Wouldn't you be asking why? Why? And as he hang, hung on the cross, what did Jesus say? He asked the question that is normal in the most difficult of situations. Folks, it is not a sin to ask why. And he's hanging there on the cross, and he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? hanging on the cross it's the it's the heart of the why question well, let's look at the scripture as we see that today mark 15 verses 33 through 36 at noon darkness came over the whole land until land until land and at three in the afternoon jesus cried out in a loud voice eloi eloi which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. Have you... Oh.